Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's Mike here at Game for Scratch, and today we are talking about Dust 3D. So what exactly is Dust 3D? Well, this is an open source cross-platform, meaning Windows, Mac, and Linux, uh, open source MIT licensed project, and it is a very unique 3D modeler. The, basically, the closest thing I can think of is it's kind of a meta ball modeler. It allows you to model things in uh, like two axes at once and very quickly create organic shapes. We're going to take a look at that in just a few minutes. Now, if you're a regular of this channel for quite some time, I first covered Dust back in in April 20th of 2018 up on YouTube. And since then, there have been some substantial changes to Dust. So that's what we're gonna look at today, basically. Just a bit of an overview of what it's all about. And if you're interested, you can go out and check it out yourself. Speaking of checking it out yourself, it is available at dust3d.org. I will, of course, link that in the linked article down below. What this modeling tool allows you to do, basically, is very easily create 3D models that have auto UV unwrapping, automatic rigging with PBR material support, posing and motion on authoring all in one package. Uh, you, can, you can export your work out GLTF, FBX, or OBJ formats. And as you can see, they also received an Epic Mega Grant. Now, we've covered a couple of programs that received Epic Mega Grants on this channel. It's a $100 million fund that... Um, Epic Games set up to sponsor uh, game development tools, open source graphic tools, other game engines, etc. Tools that have received it include such as uh, Blender, the Godot game engine, and of course Dust 3D. So uh, that is definitely nice. As I mentioned earlier on, it is cross-platform, it is open source, and available under Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. You can export as FBX and GLTF, so you can easily get things into engines such as Unreal Engine, Unity, and Godot. In this one, we will show you the process of exporting and getting the program into Blender, at which point you can do whatever you want with it. All right, so that is the basics behind Dust. As I mentioned earlier on, it is open source. Uh, here you can see it up on GitHub. I will, of course, link this in the linked article down below as well. The part that you are probably interested in is the license. As I mentioned, it is MIT license. The MIT license is one of my favorite licenses. Basically, as an end user, your limitations are you can't sue them, you can't blame them. So you've got no liability or warranty transferred to you. So if this program causes your computer to start World War III, hey, you're on your own. But other than that, you can do whatever you want with it. You don't have to pay anything. You don't really have to uh, do anything along those lines. You just have to keep the license and copyright notices intact. All right, so that is the uh, the background bit done. Now let's go take a look at Dust itself. I'm going to do this via examples. I'm actually not that great with this program personally, but here you can see one of the examples. you got a background image to go from, and things are basically drawn and created using a set of circles. As you can see up here in the corner, we can use the middle mouse button to change it. Here is the 3D shape being created as a result of these circles. So we could grab one of these circles in edit mode, and we can go ahead and move it, and you see here we're getting a humpback from it. And it's along multiple axis so here is their side view axis but I could go ahead and grab one of these guys from the side I don't know which one I'm grabbing there so let's, let's just grab this guy you'll see here and then move around and then boom so you can see how it's being you basically draw your shapes across the two axes what we can also do here and so I can grab a chain so I'm gonna grab one of these guys in the leg I'm just gonna boom double click and then you see we've got the entire chain I can do that with any one of the legs I've got and what I can do is do a right click mark as and I can say that this is a limb and then what we can do out of that is we can create a rig. So we can have it automatically create rigs that can be exported out to your tool of choice. It makes creating animatable models really, really simple. On top of that, we've also got the ability to define our own materials. Uh, I'll show you that in action in another example. Things are broken down into parts. So you can see the various different parts that went together to make this. You can organize them into hierarchies. And then you've got control over said parts. So for example, if I wanted to create and select these horns, I select them right there. I can go here and I could do something like I could assign a material to them or I could just set a solid color there. So let's give this guy some red horns. Go ahead and select that and then boom, there you see the red horns. We can do other things here. I could come in here, for example, we can change the way that things are designed. I could assign an actual uh, PBR material to that particular piece and so on. But what we've also got the ability to come down here, we can cut faces, we can chamfer our model. We can also choose, change the subdivision levels. Uh, so you see a lot more detail is being added on that model. So it makes it really fast and rapid to go ahead and create things. We can also create, again, rigs. You use those mark as, you can mark each joint as and then basically just create the rig once you've marked enough joints it will figure out how to do it and automatically create a rig for you once you've got a rig you can go ahead and create poses so basically they're just setting various different sets of keyframes and we can create motions out of that another cool thing we've got is scripting support i'm going to show you that with a different example go here to the examples or go here to this procedural one and the procedural probably gives it away now unfortunately this does seem to be a bug with dust is uh 
All right, give it a second. It doesn't seem to be responding. The procedural stuff does seem to be a bit slow, and I have this knack for keeping background images from the previous example. All right, I'm gonna pause for a second. Okay, so that was a fresh reload to get rid of the background image. The procedural stuff does take a bit of time, and you can see it's basically created a tree. Now, the key thing here, and here is the tree that is being generated, but the key thing here is that this is, again, procedural. So if I go down here to the script category, you're actually going to see here is the script that went ahead and created it. You can dump it out here. We can Obviously, you'd create that in a different editor. There is a full uh, API here, so this is programmatically creating things like create the trunk so on so you, you can write javascript code that can go ahead and create a model and as you can see down here there's a number of different um things being exported out now my uh my dpi settings seem to be a little bit weird here so you're seeing really large text but you see here like the leaf color is being procedurally passed so all these various leaves are available here we can go ahead and we can set that so let's make red leaves instead so that is being exposed out from the script that we passed in now the downside is the procedural script has to run again. As I mentioned earlier on, this isn't the fastest thing in the universe, but what you can do is basically create procedural models inside of Dust3D using the JavaScript language that are you know passed by parameters that you've defined in your script. And there you see, we now have red leaves in our thing. We could go ahead, change out the branches, the sizes, everything else and so on. And then boom, that is your result. So that is a really cool secondary ability of Dust is you got this ability to create these procedural uh, processes. So if you wanted to define meshes using uh, scripting language as opposed to manually or by hand, you have that functionality in here as well. So now I'm going to go ahead, let's use one more example. Um, so let's go ahead and create a seagull. We'll lose our exchanges. Yep. So here we go. And there. All right. So here we go. New one in just generating right now. We got a extremely large view of it in action up here. Once again, you can use the scroll bar to uh, change out the preview mesh. But here you can see Go back to the parts. These are the various different parts that go together to create our seagull. Now, this guy's actually been set up. You can see by the color coding, uh, it's certain areas have been marked. So you see here we go here, we've got a rig. Simple rig for it, uh, shown right there. Uh, there's poses, so there's an up and down pose that you can switch between or show the results of. So there is the one pose in the pose editor. You're basically setting where the skeletons go. Uh, you got control over right, um, M, M, middle or left visibility here, so you can change what you're seeing in the poses. So again, if we just want to see it from the, the left side, those are the bones being set to make that pose work, like so. And then here we can get motions. So here is a fly motion that has been defined. And what they're using is basically switching between the up and down poses at a certain key rate frame, uh, key, uh, sorry, at a certain frame rate. And there you can see the animation being created. We can speed that up as well. The last thing I'm gonna showcase here before we move out of here, so you get an idea of how dust works. You basically start just basically creating these simple shapes. They go together to create models for you. We can go ahead and add a material on top. So let's create a new material. I downloaded something, so it'll be here in my downloads. It's a rock texture from CC0 Textures. I'm just gonna go ahead and we'll set the color map here. I think there was a normal map. So let's grab the yep, normal map, a roughness map, and probably ambient occlusion map. Nope, oh, displacement color, duh, duh, no, so nope. All right, so I'll use those three. So those three maps are now defined. There you can see a preview of the shape. Again, middle mouse button controls it. You can zoom in and see the result. So you've got a full PBR workflow here. We'll call this one Rocky. All right, so there we go. We now have that material available. And what we could do now is go back to the parts menu. So here are the various different pieces that go together to create this. So here are the wings as an example. I can go into here, select there. Oh, I don't wanna do a map. I wanna go here instead and we can select the material directly. And there you see, we've now defined that rocky material on our thing. We've got control over the shading options that are available. You even come in here, uh, you go to the, where are our preference? preferences right here? You got options for tune shading, flat shading, and so on. And then once you like what you've got, uh, you can go ahead and do an export. So we've got a couple of options here. Uh, we can do an export or we can export as OBJ or we can do basically export as image, which is just basically be a render of this guy right here. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and do an export uh, right here. Uh, and then we've got a choice between GLB and FBX. So we're going to do a GLB. And here are the textures that are going to be generated. So go ahead and save that. Uh, it doesn't add the file extension by default, by the way. So let's dump this in my temp folder. And we'll call this bird.glb. So let's put that in there. And there. So we've gone ahead. We've created this guy. We've exported out. Now I'm going to head on over to Blender. And we'll do a file, import, and then GLB. 
that was in temp bird load that up there you see it so there is our bird that we modeled using dust 3d you're going to see here you've also got a rig so there's a full armature here uh, you can do is go over here so the material section, you're going to see the rock material that we defined is exported and properly works, which is kind of cool. And then the key thing is, again, that armature is there. So with that selected, I could go over here. We could switch into pose mode. And you see I can grab a given bone that was generated. Let's do a rotate. And there you see. So we could easily bring these models in to another tool, fully rigged, fully textured, and basically just get to work on it. So it's, it's really... Uh, fast way of modeling, a completely different approach to it, but you can get rigged characters out of it in a snap. Now you may want to use this for more generating base maps or base meshes, and then you come into something like this uh, after the fact. So let's go back here. We could go into uh, the mesh itself, and if we wanted to, for example, we could come in here and just start sculpting it and changing things up you know, modify it however we wish. So you could use Dust3D as your original base map generator and then start adding details or refinement in your tool of choice. But the cool thing you see here is texturing works. It automatically did create UV maps for us. So we've got um, the textures as I'm scaling, you see here, the textures are distorted correctly because there was a UV map generated for us. The rig automatically comes out for you. Really, you just have to mark which areas are spine, which areas are uh, limbs, and so on. And then, boom, it spits out a rig. So this is really one of the single fastest ways uh, to create uh, animation. Now, as you can see here, there's also that animation in place. Remember with the two poses? So there you can see the flap between the two poses. Now, obviously, I screwed with it a little bit. Actually, no, I didn't set any keys, so uh, that's fine. But even the animations are being carried across. Now, obviously, there's only a handful of frames. Let's jump that down to 25 and start over. So there you see our guy. All right, why did you not end? Oh, no, did it right here. My bad. Like so, our animation comes in, and there you go. So you can get fully textured, fast prototyped, uh, rigged animated models out of this guy that you can create in just a few minutes and then you can bring them into your tool chain of choice. It's, it's a really cool application for sure and a lot of features and functionalities have been added since I first looked at it back in April 20th of 2018. So that's one of two graphics videos I tend to I, I, I intend to revisit. So we got this one and maybe there's another one that I'm going to look at again. I, I can't tell you which one but it, it will probably be coming up soon. But that is Dust 3D, an open source uh, MIT licensed uh, Unreal Engine or Epic Game Mega Fund backed uh, project. I definitely recommend you check it out. The workflow is a completely different way of going about things, but it is uh, rapid. And as you can see, the results can be brought into your tool of choice. And if you are not a modeler, you are not a rigger, uh, you'll find that this tool is doing a lot of the heavy lifting for you. And that's part of why I recommend checking it out. All right, that's it for now. Hope you found that useful and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.